Let's talk about the Juliana Hatfield 3's album, Become What You Are. You guys know I like Juliana Hatfield, so I'm going to recommend Garage Geek. Find the Juliana Hatfield 3, Become What You Are, uh, from 1993. It's getting reissued uh, for her 30th anniversary. Uh Hi, welcome to Garage Geek. So today I'm reviewing an album that Chris from Record Talk... Now what's interesting about this is usually when... I do a VC recommends I listen. I ask for permission, but it's usually a surprise. So the people on their channels, usually they recommend a whole bunch of music and then they're not sure which one I've taken or even which one, which video I've, I've taken it from. But Chris specifically wanted me to listen to this recording. So this actually should have been a challenge. I should have challenged him to something. I started listening to this album. And I'm going to say that one of the reasons I think I should have challenged him is because this album is kind of out of my comfort zone. And why is that? It's because this is 90s music. And I was out of the country for most of the 90s. And I heard hit songs mostly that were on the military radio. So this album is from 1993, so um, I'd, I'd never heard it before. And I'm also going to say that my favorite album from around this time is Belly's album, Star. And so anything that I listen to from the 90s, I kind of uh, use that as a gauge. So the one thing that I was worried about is that I wouldn't like this album since I didn't get to pick it. So normally if there's a whole bunch of records, then I would pick something that I think that I would at least, um, that I want to get to know a little bit better. But since he challenged me to this one, I didn't get to pick. And so I'm worried, I was worried that I wouldn't like it since it's 90s music. Well, first off, Chris from Record Talk is a great channel. He's always doing interesting things on his channel. I love when he goes into like old like flea markets and play and he goes through all the the albums and I, I i particularly like when people do that because there's almost always a record that they pass up that i want to grab um and that's so frustrating right but he has all kinds of content i um i like his five uh five records in five minutes but he says five records in five minutes he needs to copyright that because I want to steal it. I want to, I want to, I want to say records too, but I know I can't. But you know what? You better copyright that. So a little bit of background uh, to this album. So Juliana Hatfield is from around Boston. Uh, this this record had two singles on it. The first single was My Sister, and then the single was from 1993. And it surprised me. Because it has the word bitch in it. Now, I'm, you know, I was, I've been thinking about that and I, I'm thinking, well, ha, are there a lot of singles with actual swearing in them? And I, you know, I could think of the, the song, I'm a bitch, I'm a slut. <laughs> oh, wait, that's, that's, I don't know if the way I'm singing it sounds right or not, but, um, what's that song anyway? Is it he's a bitch, she's a slut? No, I'm a bitch, I'm a slut. And I'm not talking about the um the the one song uh wait, what's the other song from the eighties? Terry Nunn. Terry Nunn sings it. You know, the the from the band, the one who's a, take my breath away. I'm a blue moon bee, I'm a slut, I'm your slave. I'm a dream divine and we'll make love together. I think she says bitch in that song too. But maybe in the 80s, they, they beeped it out. Anyways, I think that would be an interesting thread if someone could make a video with uh, songs that have cursing in them that have been hits. Maybe someone's already done it. Oh. Let's, let's get back to this album. Oh, in my research, I came across that Juliana Hatfield has done two cover albums. One was Juliana Hatfield Sings Olivia Newton-John from 2018. And one, Juliana Hatfield Sings The Police from 2019. And Chris, I wish you had given me one of those instead. I would have dug those. Become What You Are, the album title, is the debut studio album from the Juliana Hatfield 3. My Sister was a single from it. 
but also um, Spin the Bottle, which was used in the 1994 Reality Bites movie. The title, Become What You Are, uh, the title of the album, was inspired by Nietzsche. That was kind of interesting. Now, there's a whole backstory behind the, the song, My Sister. There's actually a really large entry on Wikipedia about it. But um, Juliana Hatfield doesn't actually have a sister. And it was inspired by an older woman who was a sister figure to her. And the cover of the single is kind of weird. <laughs> I guess that's the other two members of the band and they're dressed in wigs. But that's an assumption. All right, so let's talk about some of the music. So there, I believe there are 11 songs. I picked sound bites from, from six of them. The first one I, I took a sound bite from was from Supermodel. And the way she sings the word trash, listen to how long she holds the note. Trash. So you can tell that she definitely has a good voice. The next song, My Sister, is again her biggest hit. So let's go ahead and listen to a snippet from that. I love my sister. She's the best. Now, I, I kind of dug the lyrics of this one because the first uh, chorus, or maybe it's refrain, of the song, she calls her sister a bitch and, and, you know, says why she hates her. And then the next part of the song, she's she uses the same refrain, but she reverses the lyrics. She says how she loves her sister and, and everything that she did for her. So to me, the, the writing was really interesting because it rings true about how people in our lives at, at certain times, we hate them and then we love them, but we can't do without them. The The next song that I'm going to give a, a soundbite from is This Is The Sound. And this one had a really, really catchy um, beat to it. It's like a boo, boo, boop. So in the fourth soundbite, we're going to hear how she can hit a higher note. Let's go ahead and listen to this soundbite from Mabel. Okay, I especially liked the words or uh, the lyrics to Feeling Massachusetts. It was kind of like, I'm going to say the lyrics on the, the album, throughout the album, are not easy. Some of them are impressionistic. And, uh, for example, she might be at a party and she's just go jumping from topic, topic to topic. So sometimes it's difficult to understand what the words are exactly about or what they exactly mean. For example, in uh, Feeling Massachusetts, it seems like she's just wa wandering around. And she's experiencing emotions as she walks uh, around. And um, at one point in the song, she references a poem. Um, I think I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree. And since I love poetry so much, I'm just going to read the entire poem. I think I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree, a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. A tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. A tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair, upon whose bosom snow has lain, who intimately lives with rain. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree. So she references at least the first four lines in this poem. I, I would have to go back and see if she uh, references more. But I think she stops there and then she continues on with her thoughts. So this poem is by Joyce Kilmer. So the next sound bite we're going to get is from Spin the Bottle, which was the other hit, and it was used in the movie Reality Bites. And I I really like the the beat of this song too. It's really catchy. Do 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 de, do 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 de, do de, do 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 do. Okay, so I picked uh, lyrics, I'm sorry, I picked sound bites from a little bit over a half the songs, but President Garfield also has these really interesting lyrics from from the whole album. This was the song, the lyrics interested me the most, 
So I'm going to go ahead and read just a little bit of the lyrics so you can get an idea. I don't smoke, so why am I smoking? Took a hit and now I'm choking. He wrote a book about himself. I keep it on my shelf. And when I was in Washington, I walked down all the streets of which he wrote. So again, the lyrics kind of flow from one idea to another, jumping. It reminds me of, what do they call that style of literature? Stream of consciousness. So what are my final thoughts on this album? I I really enjoyed it. I was I enjoyed getting to to hear her voice. I I do think the album is a little bit too long. Like it could have been trimmed. But that's just me, right? Cuz I know Chris really really loves this this record. But remember, I've only been listening to it about a week and so it could grow on me even more. Um some of the songs sounded kind of similar, but again, I'm not really into this um, era of music too well, but I did appreciate her voice, as I pointed out in the video. I appreciated the writing and the lyrics. I think if I paid attention to the lyrics more on some of the other songs, I might start to like them just as much. So I am glad that I listened to this, and, I'm, I'm, and I thank you, Chris, for um, challenging me to listen to this. Since I know this is probably one of your favorite recordings, I hope you don't mind just a little bit of criticism that I gave. But overall, this is a really, really solid album. And um, I really, really would like to hear the two cover albums that she does because she does have a really, really nice and interesting voice. So thank you so much for uh, tuning in and uh, and for all of your support. And Chris, I would love to do an actual challenge with you.